What's up guys, I hope you're doing well. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to edit this fun intro in Final Cut Pro 10. Okay, so here we are in Final Cut Pro 10, and once again, this is what we're wanting to create. Okay, perfect. So. I used this for a short travel video I did after a trip with my sister to San Andres, Colombia. I just wanted something fun and creative for the intro and that is what I came up with. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make this entirely from scratch. So we're gonna head into a new project in Final Cut Pro and we're gonna drag our first clip onto our timeline. So you're gonna need some type of paper, a pen, a marker to create this. And I just had this paper lying around and I used this blue highlighter I had and I used a credit card to kind of trace out that rough rectangle. So I'm gonna use the second snap I did, which I thought was a lot better when I'm snapping my fingers. So I'm gonna place my playhead a little bit before I snap my fingers and I'm gonna press O, that selects the front end of the clip and I'm gonna press delete because I don't need that. All right, so this is what I would have so far. Right there, you guys can see that my fingers snap. Now I'm gonna select the clip and press Shift Control S to detach the audio. I don't need the clip's original audio, so I'm gonna delete that as well. And I'm going to quickly color grade this clip. Okay, so I just did a very basic color grading right there. I didn't go too much into it just for the sake of time. But anyways, next thing we're gonna do is we are going to drag our song onto the timeline. I gave my music from Epidemic Sound and I just really liked the vibe of the song. I thought it was perfect for the video. I'm going to delete the remainder of the song just because we don't need it for the intro. So I'm gonna hit delete and that gap that Final Cut creates. Okay, perfect. So this is what we would have right now. Okay, so I really wanna line up when my fingers snap, which is right there. I wanna line that up really well when the song picks up pace. So I'm gonna have to move the song a little bit towards the right. So I think right there is perfect. And now I'm gonna trim the beginning of the clip to line up with the song. So I think right there is perfect. And right after I snap, right here. I want to place my playhead right there after I snap and I'm going to hit M to add a marker. I just want to make sure I know where that is. And with my playhead right there, I'm going to hit Command B to split that clip. So once I've split it, I'm going to select the second clip and you can either hit Command 5 or you can head over to the effects browser. Under masks, we are going to add our first mask. I'm going to use the draw mask for this one. So with that selected, we're gonna drag it onto our second clip. Okay, so that opens up the draw mask tool in the inspector, and we're gonna start adding our first points. So I'm gonna just real quickly use the highlighter as a guide, and I'm trying to stick close to the interior part of the rectangle. So right there. Okay, perfect. So this is the mask that we created, but we're gonna wanna invert that mask because we want what's underneath this clip to be showing. So I'm gonna hit invert right there. That's perfect. Let's let it render. Okay, great. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna head back into my project browser and I'm gonna select the drone clip that I want to be coming underneath the mask. So this is the one that I want and I'm gonna drag that and place it lined up with the second clip underneath it. So right there is perfect. Okay, great. So now we can see the drone clip under our mask and I'm gonna color grade the drone clip real quickly. So what I'm gonna do is select the top clip and I'm gonna press V. That disables the clip just so I can see better and I'm gonna color grade this real quickly. Okay, great. So very simple color grade. We're gonna select our top clip and press V again to bring the clip back. Okay, perfect, so this is what we would have right now. Okay, awesome, so as you guys can see, when I'm snapping, the mask is coming in, it's aligning well with the music. Now, I know that the first part of the mask is gonna be static, 
And it's only when I bring my fingers back in and start shaking the paper right there that we need to keyframe the mask. So I'm going to wait till the first movement, which is right there. So let me go back a frame right there. Okay, perfect. So right when that first movement comes in, I'm going to select the top clip, make sure my playhead is there, and once again, press Command B to split the clip once again. Okay, perfect. So we're going to start keyframing this mask. Now, I know a lot of you might be asking, I add the feather at the end. I don't like to add it while I'm keyframing, so we will do that at the end. We will add some feather to this mask. All right, so with the third clip now selected, we're gonna head back into our inspector, into the Draw Mask tool, and immediately I'm going to right-click on Control Points and Add Keyframes, and I'm gonna right-click on Transform and Add Keyframes. Okay, so we wanna be aligning the mask with the movement of the paper, right? Because since we're moving it, if we just leave the mask there, it's not gonna look realistic. Now, since the effect is happening so quickly, you don't, you don't need to be pinpoint precise with your mask. Obviously, that's up to you. So I am gonna be just a little bit rough with this mask, but I'm gonna just first move it to align it once again with the highlighter, and I'm gonna have to go frame by frame until the movement stops. So I'm not gonna show you guys every single frame, but I'm just gonna fast forward through this. Okay, great, so we have keyframed our mask, and something I like to do as I'm keyframing a mask is going back a frame or two and just making sure that it's looking nice, it's looking like it's moving with the motion, um, so that's really important, and obviously it's extremely important to make sure that you added those keyframes to the control points and to the transform tab under the draw mask. It's really disappointing if you forget to and then you get all the way to the end and you realize you did not keyframe and you have to start all over again. So that definitely takes some patience, but hopefully you got that done and we can continue. So. Like I told you guys a little bit before, once I've created the mask and I've keyframed everything, that's when I go back and I add the feathering that I think is appropriate for the mask. So first thing, I'm gonna select the second clip where we created the first mask where we didn't need to keyframe it because the paper was static. And I think for me, I think 20 is gonna be good for this, yeah. That looks perfect for me. So 20, we don't need to keyframe anything on the feather because we want the feather to be consistent. And I'm gonna select the third clip and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add 20 on the feather. Okay, perfect. So let's let that render real quickly. Great, so after the keyframing and everything with the mask, this is what our project is gonna be looking like. Okay, that looks awesome right there flows really well you you can barely tell that you know the, the mask is moving with the paper it looks really nice okay so one thing we're going to do real quick before we go into the color grading part of the effect is i'm going to add my title so i told you guys that this was a short video after a travel trip to san andres colombia which is an incredible beautiful little island in the caribbean I went with my sister, so I definitely wanted people to know that that's where we were. So I'm gonna select the second clip, and I'm gonna make sure my playhead is at the beginning of that clip. I'm gonna head over into my titles, and I'm gonna grab the basic title and drag it on top of the second clip, lining it up with the playhead, and I'm gonna press B, and just trim off the remainder of the clip. Perfect. Okay, great, so I'm gonna head over into the inspector, and I'm gonna type in, I like using all caps uh, for the title, so I'm gonna type in San Andres. Okay, perfect. So I'm not gonna use Helvetica, I want something different. So I am going to hit the font, and I'm gonna type in P-U-L, and I'm gonna use the Pulsar Original. So I downloaded this font from the internet, I just, I really like the way it looks. And now, I'm going to add a little bit of tracking. I think around 4% will be perfect for me. That looks good. And now I'm going to scroll down and I'm gonna hit show on the face because I want a different color and I'm gonna hit the color right here. And I'm going to use the color picker to select kind of the darker blues of the water just to kind of match that up nicely. 
So I think that is perfect for me right there. So I'm gonna close this. Let's let it render real quickly. Okay, great. So I'm gonna scroll back up and I want this to be bigger. So I'm gonna increase the size, I think to 110. Yeah, that looks nice right there. Now we're going to hit the transform. Okay, so I want the title coming in from the right going towards the left. So making sure that I've selected my title, my playhead is at the beginning and having selected the transform option right here, I'm going to drag my title up right there and then I'm gonna head over towards the right. So I wanna make sure it starts outside of the frame. So right there is perfect and we're gonna add a keyframe. Okay, so once you've added that first keyframe, we're gonna go, we're gonna grab the playhead and we're gonna move forward a little bit, I think around right there will be perfect. And now with the playhead in the second location, we're gonna drag our title. You can tell that Final Cut has created another keyframe for us automatically and it's showing us the movement of the title. I'm gonna drag it till it aligns with the center of the frame. So I'm gonna go a little bit lower. That's perfect right there. If you want to change the beginning of the clip, you can select the little arrow towards the end. And I'm gonna bring it down a little bit just to make sure it's a very parallel movement for the title. Perfect. I'm gonna hit done and let this render. Okay, great. So this is what we have right now with the title included. Okay, awesome. So I really like that. It's coming in nice and fast. It looks really good. And so now we're gonna do the color grading of the drone clip with the black and white just to really kind of bring all this into life. Okay, great. So selecting the drone clip, I'm gonna hit option and I'm gonna drag and that creates an identical copy for me. Okay, great. So we created the identical copy and now selecting the top clip, the top drone clip, I'm gonna to go to my inspector and I'm gonna head into my color wheels I'm gonna hit the drop down, add correction. I'm gonna add a second color wheels. And I'm gonna completely desaturate it. So I'm gonna completely desaturate it and I'm gonna bring down the shadows and the highlights a little bit, just to add a bit more contrast. That's looking good for me right there. Okay, so after color grading the top clip to black and white, this is what we would have. Okay, so obviously we wanna bring the color back into our clip and I'm gonna align it with the movement of my fingers. So it's kinda of like my fingers are bringing that color into life. So I'm gonna place my playhead when my fingers start that movement. So I think around right there is good for me. I'm gonna leave my playhead there. I'm gonna select the top drone clip and I'm gonna hit Control V to open up this clip's animation, the video animation. Okay, so I'm going to head into the bottom tab, which is compositing opacity, and I'm gonna hit the drop down, and I'm gonna to head to where my playhead is, where we left it. I'm gonna hold down option, and I'm gonna create a keyframe, and then I'm gonna create a second one a little bit more towards the right. So right there is perfect. Okay, so what we are about to do is we're gonna change the opacity of the top clip. So right now, the opacity of the top clip is entirely at 100% but we've created these two keyframes. And so after the second keyframe, we're gonna completely bring down the line to 0%. So that's telling Final Cut Pro that the top clip is no longer visible and that brings back our color. So right now we have this. Okay, perfect. So as you guys can see, when our fingers are moving the paper, it's like we're bringing that color back in. I think that looks really good. I'm gonna leave the decompositing opacity exactly as it is. I really like how it's flowing. That's brilliant. So what we're gonna do is after we bring the color back in, I think around right there for me is looking really good. We're gonna select the top clip, the clip of our fingers and the paper, and where we left our playhead, where we want to really go into the drone shot, I'm gonna hit Command B. So now we split the clip again and selecting now the fourth clip, I'm going to create a Ken Burns effect. So you can head over here to the transform options and we're gonna hit crop. We're gonna hit Ken Burns 
and we are going to completely bring down the end part as small as we can. So I'm gonna make that as small as possible and I'm gonna line it up nice in the center with the green, which is where the clip starts. I'm gonna press done. And so now the clip is gonna start zooming in to the drone shot like that. That looks really nice. Now, if you want this to happen faster, all you have to do is clip the ending of the clip. So right now, this is what we would have. Okay, so as you can tell, it's a, li it's a little slow for my liking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab the trimmer and just trim this last clip down to around about there. I think that's good for me. And so now this is what we have. Okay, brilliant. So I really like how that's looking, the speed, the rhythm, the music. Now, the last thing that we're gonna do to really wrap this all up is the sound effects. So I'm gonna quickly bring in some sound effects to completely sell the effect, and we are finished. Okay, so I added a human snap finger sound effect to just kind of really sell when I'm snapping my fingers and bringing that first mask into life. And then I added a paper sheet unfold. I actually got this one from Epidemic Sound just to kind of really sell that effect when I'm moving the paper to bring the color back in. And then I like this sweet motion sound effect that comes with Final Cut Pro just for maybe a longer drone shot to kind of give it that, that feeling that we're flying. So that really wraps it up and this is the final product. Okay, really well done. I think intros are really important. It's, it's important to be captivating and so I really enjoyed doing that for that short travel video. If you do wanna check out the entire video, just hit the link up above. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it, well done. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If I can help in any way, please let me know down below in the comments. And yeah, keep creating, keep believing in yourselves and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.